is perhaps the most visually arresting and yet also the most complicated of the elements of art. Color itself is very difficult to define. Color in scientific terms is a visual property of specific wavelengths of light. It is something that's difficult to even possess. So when white light is broken down as when it passes through a prism, wavelengths are separated to reveal the color spectrum, the spectrum of light that is visible to the naked eye. The spectrum ranges from the slowest waves being red to the fastest waves, which are violet. We see color when an object absorbs all wavelengths but one, and that reflected wavelength, which hits our eye, is the color that we see. The color wheel is an arrangement of hues based on color theory, a system of ordering and categorizing colors. We will be working on color wheels in our worksheets for this class as a way to show the importance of primary colors. The primary colors are the base pigments that an artist can mix any hue from. They cannot be made from any colors, and you cannot make other colors without them. The primary colors are, of course, yellow, red, and blue. Mixing primary colors will give you secondary colors. Mixing red and yellow gives you orange, red and blue gives you violet, and mixing blue and yellow gives you green. Mixing secondary and primary colors will give you tertiary colors. And beyond that, you can continue to mix colors in an infinite arrangement of hues. Let's talk about some key color relationships and how those relate to certain conventions in the art world. Complementary colors are the opposites on a color wheel. So the opposite of red is green. The opposite of blue is orange, and the opposite of violet is yellow. Laying two complementary colors side by side will actually make each other appear brighter. Think about the way that red ornaments or red berries look so bright against a green Christmas tree or against green holly leaves in the winter. That red next to that green makes each appear brighter. However, when you mix complementary colors, the result is neutralizing. So mixing complementary colors creates neutrals or browns. Artists can use complementary colors side by side to draw attention to certain parts of their artwork through the use of contrast. In this particular painting by Henri Matisse, our eyes are drawn out of the window because of the striking difference between the green of the grass and the overwhelming, very vivid red of the room. Complementary colors also reveal some of the more unfortunate aspects of society. Consider the orange-teal effect that is largely seen in contemporary cinema. This is what happens when a film has been keyed to have the backgrounds very teal blue, and that is because that very saturated bluish teal color is the complement of a certain shade of skin tone, very peachy. And so what that reveals in cinema is a preference for certain skin tones above others through the prevalence, so much so that it has become almost a parody in recent cinema posters for the orange-teal effect. And then there are the families of warm and cool colors, warm colors being reds, oranges, and yellows, while cool colors are blues, greens, and purples. These color families represent certain general themes, warm colors being associated with warmth, vitality, lust, passion, while cool colors are often associated with calmness, with sadness, or even death. And why do you think 
that these color schemes represent what they do. Consider the prevalence of red or absence of red in the warm or the cool schemes. The more red that we see in a scheme reminds us of something that is very vital to us that is also red, that being blood. The more blood that pumps through our veins or the harder that it's pumping is associated on a subliminal level with levels of heat, of anger, of passion, of sexual arousal. When our blood spills, we know that we are in danger. So seeing red is an ingrained part of us to know that something important, something that is making our blood move is going on. On the other hand, cool colors are very absent of red, just as cooler bodies are more absent of red. Our bodies are noticeably less red when we are cold, when we are sleeping, or even in death, our bodies turn quite grayish from the absence of blood. And so on a very primal level, we already understand the meaning of cool and warm colors. A work of art that deals primarily with tints and shades in one hue, so light blue, dark blue, blue gray, blue green, all in the blue family is called monochromatic, meaning one color. Artists like Pablo Picasso, when he went through his blue period, painted in series of blue. So it was a monochromatic compositions illustrating a very specific mood that he was going through at the time. And that mood is heavily emphasized, doubled down on because he sticks to one color. So now for a chance for you to do some visual analysis, what is the relationship between the two strongest colors in this painting by Vincent van Gogh? And how does this use of colors inform your feelings? So how does that color relationship and that kind of strong visual contrast, how does that make you feel when you are looking at an artwork such as this. <laughs>